Okay, great. So um, we're going to continue with descriptive writing as well. Um, however, I just want to do some guidelines before that. So let me just uh, end this. Great. So um, I'm sharing my screen, sharing the document that you already have. Um, right. Okay. So this was the one that we tried to write. And did we have? Okay. Yeah. So you wrote this yourself, and I am supposed to check this with you. Um, right. So it, the topic was describe an annual event which you enjoy and why is it so important to you. And this was the introduction we agreed on. And this is what you... Okay, yeah, so this is what you wrote and then we corrected this. This is the sample that I gave you. Then you had to continue from writing on this part, uh, which was we had divided the topic, even though because it wasn't, um, obviously it wasn't divided for you, you haven't been given the content pointer. So we divided into two, three paragraphs that we'll be writing our body paragraphs. So what happened in this event? Why is it enjoyable? Uh, why is it important to you? So the event is very entertaining. One of the highlights of the event is a market which is set up in halls, neighborhoods, or the streets which have stalls of traditional clothing and jewelry. Repetition, this is something that we've already written. Traditional clothes and jewelry. So this needs to, uh, you need to look at the repetition because we've all, we already know that there's stalls, there's stalls of all of these. Stalls of Hena, we already know that. But this is fine. The descri description here is fine. Maybe just change the words, change the vocabulary a little bit. Have lines so long, cues, not lines, cues so long. So this is going to be cues so long, having customers, having the design of, of their choice. Uh, out in the, you can always hear the kids yelling. OK, yeah, this is something I've checked already. And I've said the same things. OK. A reason why it's important to me as it brings closeness around the world. Closeness around the world is not the right sentence structure. Maybe or you can write um, brings every city closer or gives everyone a chance to interact. It's celebrated worldwide aiding um globalization or aiding um interaction right so this is uh, what we've got community family strength uh, whenever someone Wherever someone is genre, there's something that are, in our culture everybody gets excited for before eat. This is good. It's a chance where family and friends come up together, start eat preparations. Together, the feeling you get on genre is something unique. It's a feeling of excitement when you see Hena stalls set up on the, again, repetition. This is all repetition. Hena stalls, we already know. This is the third time uh, we know of Hena stalls. So the smell of oily but delicious street food, the sound of kids running around, we already know this as well with excitement, excitement is overused. There's excitement is used five times. Genre is something that, something, um, genre brings something different each year. The topic, again, describe, right. So according to the topic, you have covered all of the pointers in the sense that yes, you have described what this annual event looks like and you have explained why it is important to you. The three things that need, you need to work on is A, again, to formulate your content pointers so you know where to write what. The second one is that you need to, uh, do better with your sentence structure. So I feel like because you're writing too much at once, uh, that is why the sentence structure is getting lost in between. So because of which you will need to uh, make sure, just a second, yeah. Because of which you will need to make sure that you're writing, when you're writing, you've already planned what you're writing. So maybe just make pointers first that I'm going to be mentioning the colors in this, I'm gonna be mentioning the stalls in this, I'm gonna be mentioning Hena in this particular paragraph. So you don't repeat it and the sentence structure remains the same. Another thing is that uh, we need to remember that it's descriptive, right? So in the case, in this, because you, you keep thinking that you're supposed to describe something, um, you are repeating it. 
So because of that, you need to make sure that every single time you're describing something, either it is something completely different or you're describing it in a sec- in a separate way. So for example, when we talk about Hena, so one can be that the stalls are so uh, polluted or, you know, oh, sorry, populated and the stalls are so full and there's queues. That's one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is that there's types of Hena and that the color of uh, the, the color, there's different colors, there's different designs. So those can be the two aspects of it. When we are talking about street food, one aspect can be that it's oily but delicious. The other aspect can be of desserts that, you know, everybody's just distributing sweets and everything. So that's that both those things come under dessert. So that's how you can make your descriptions different about the same thing. But you need to make sure that you're not repeating and you need to make sure that um, you nothing's getting lost in the detail. Uh, am I making sense to you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. understood. Okay, that's amazing. So I just want you to, I'm going to be giving you another topic, which will be relatively a little more tricky. And let's try and write that. Some people enjoy being in a crowded place while others prefer somewhere quiet quieter with fewer people describe your perfect place when you want to relax now you what you're going to do right now is just for for now you will just divide it into the three points that you will be writing so just divide this into the three points that you will be writing according to yourself sorry can you repeat that i said for now all you have to do is i've given you the topic all you have to do is that you have to divide it into three points are the three points that you will be using as your body paragraph content pointers, right? So what is your first body paragraph going to be about? What's your second body paragraph going to be about? And what your third body paragraph is going to be about? Just those okay. three points. Okay. In this type of uh, topic, can I can I have the first paragraph describing like kind of like a I don't know like a quiet place, and then the second one um, um, a crowded place, and the third one just what I prefer. Can that work? You you can do that, but the thing is that um, when you're writing a descriptive, and because you are writing it, it has to be about you. So when you are talking about your perfect place, so like because it says describe your perfect place when you want to relax, so um, it's better to relate it to yourself. So even if what you're doing is that in the first paragraph, if you're writing about a crowded place, then you will have to relate it to yourself. And if you are writing about a more quieter place, then you will have to relate, relate it to yourself as well. So for example, if you're talking about a crowded place and you yourself do not prefer that, right? So you have to mention that, you know, uh, just like I hate, I do not um, mingle in crowd places or whatever, right? So you'll have to relate it to yourself. And when you're writing a third paragraph, there's there's no doubt, but that will have more attention and more reflection because that's where you're actually writing your descriptive. So I would suggest that you do not do that because you're going to get lost in your own um, opinion, what you are actually supposed to write. But because it's a little tricky and because there's a lot of details that need to be mentioned here, the best thing you can do is that you can choose which one is more preferable to you 
and then you can provide a contra view. So for example, if you're talking about, uh, let's say that you prefer a quieter place, right? So your first body paragraph can be that what is that you prefer and then describe the place that you do, right? And then you will have to relate it to whether it's um, quiet or whatever, it's loud or whatever, right? And in the second part, again, you can continue describing your place. And you need to remember to relax. This is not your place to um, roam around. This is not your place to party. This is your place to relax. So you need to remember that particular aspect of it, right? And you continue describing that and how you relax in that place and then the third point could be that you contra the, for example, because you prefer a quieter place right now, you contra the loud place. So you, right here, you just write a contra view or an opposing view. So a contra view is an opposing view, which is you where you describe maybe a louder place. And then you can say that it's not a place that where you would prefer to relax, but a place where you would maybe prefer to hang out with your friends with, right? Like a louder place. So then you maybe just give a description of a louder place. Or if you want to do it, do the way that you were speaking about. So again, when you when you're describing quiet, this has to relate to you. When you're describing loud, again, has to relate to you. And then you can describe your place. But when I when I what I mean when I say relate to you, so you will have to express your opinion, express your description of what a quiet place is, what a loud place is. So when I think about it, a quiet place for me would be let's say the beach, right? And a loud place for me would be, let's say a very fancy restaurant, right? So that again, that's my expressive point of view. So I will need to describe it with my perspective. So I can't say that Saliha thinks that um, this particular place is quiet. I'll have to say that, you know, why, why do I think it's a quiet place to relax or whatever? Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. Okay. So just follow either of these, whatever um, point is you want to. So you can follow the first one or the second one for your body paragraphs. But right now, just give me an introduction. Do not rush anything. Just give me an introduction. Do not rush to your body paragraphs, okay? Okay. Okay. Perfect.
Is this okay for an introduction? Wait, let me just read it. I still remember spending all my time in my special place. I've been to my family and I used to book a cabin up on the mountains and go snowboarding. It was a place where I could, um, I met one. Okay, till here, it's fine. Use this later. So I could, I used, uh, even this introduction is fine. I mean, the whole thing is fine. Just one thing that I would change, even though I'm not saying it's wrong, but something that I would change is this, the first sentence. It doesn't seem like a hook, right? So a, a first sentence, could, your topic sentence should, should always be a hook, right? So a hook is basically, it should always convince your reader to read ahead, right? So if I read, I still remember spending all my time in my special place. I wouldn't be that curious, right? So maybe just something descriptive about your special place would also work. So because your special place is a cabin, so you could maybe just start by saying, um, I don't know what I miss here. The red shirt. The wedding. Okay, now when you say, let's say what I wrote here is that I don't know what I miss more. And then I would put a comma, the wooden swing or the red bells. Now, if the, if your paragraph is starting with this, then obviously the reader, so me as a reader would be curious what you're talking about. What wooden swing? What red bells are you talking about? What place are you talking about? So it, your first sentence needs to be something that hooks the reader. Hooks means, again, it, it makes your reader read more. It wants, makes your reader curious. Okay, so it makes your reader curious to know what's happening later. So maybe if you start with something like this, then you and then after that you say every winter my family and I used to book a cabin up on the mountains. You so maybe you still do. So you can say every winter my family and I book a cabin uh, up on the mountains and go snowboarding. Uh, it was a place where I could unwind and let go of all my worries and thoughts. That's it. That's your introduction. Do I make sense to you? Yeah, I just had one question. How long? Should the introduction be like how many words should be? At max. so this is Pardon? more than enough i said three sentences at max so this is more than enough so this is like 44 words right so you yeah. should range from 40 to 50 words that's maximum okay got it okay perfect
Okay, I'm done. Okay, yeah. So, wait, just let me fix the spelling errors. Okay, one thing I can see right here is that you're changing tenses. So, you're moving from past to present, present to past, past, past to present, present to past again and again. So, although there are many families the piece when I felt there, that I felt when I went there every year did not change. Okay, now, one thing you need to keep in check is that, for example, if you're saying I felt when I went there, so you've said it once, right? So that I, you went there, okay? Then you're saying whenever I went there again, okay? So this is repetition. Maybe here you can say, um, you can just start your whole sentence like this. It was an unusual, you don't need to mention this part. So you can just say it was, an un, it was unusual how it was so crowded yet so quiet. Uh, when I stepped outside the cabin. Now, when I stepped out, now you're saying that it's the whole thing is going present tense. But then you were like, when I stepped in. So when is present, step is past. So you can you have to say when I step outside the cabin or every time I stepped, then you can make me stay in the past. So if you're wanting to stay in the past tense, you stay in the past tense only. Now you can say when I every time I stepped outside the cabin, I could feel the uh, cool breeze blowing through my hair, giving me chills throughout my body. Every year I visited, it was as if my senses sharpened. I noticed everything as as a sense is sharpened because you started to notice everything around you right so because you then, then you'll an alternative for because would be as so as i started uh, as i noticed everything around me the smell of the fresh french fries being cooked french fries are not cooked they are fried so you'll have to write french fries being fried or fries being fried you know anything like that um the sound of the chairlift dropping people up the hill and the touch and sensation of the soft snow um it is known that you cannot touch snow. So maybe sensation is more than enough or you can, the felt can be one thing. It was somewhere I could spend all my day. It was my special. So this is, this seems like a concluding sentence. So maybe you do not need this here as well. This seems like something you can mention in your conclusion, right? So this is not needed over here because right now you're just describing the place that you, uh, that is your, um, your um, perfect place to relax. So you've described that, which is a good description. So that's a good that's good uh, thing that you've done. You've described it well. Now you go ahead and you write your second body paragraph. Just don't mention this until you're at the conclusion, because this is like a conclusive sentence. And stay in past tense now. Just everything you write should be in the past tense now. Okay. Okay. Perfect.
Okay, I'm done. Okay, great. So every morning before anyone woke up, I used to get ready and get all my gear on for snowboarding. I enjoyed going snowboarding before anyone else. It was a secret. I kept whenever I visited. The chairlift was a 20 minute walk from my cabin. It gave, cabin sorry. It gave me a chance to observe and find the way that I was stuck here. Get a chance to spot it here in the world when I had a camera. This is a run on set. Okay, I fixed it. I had a camera in one hand and my snowboard in the other. This is present tense. I don't need this here. This is not okay. Uh, the chairlift was the part I enjoyed the most. Again, this is, you know, you're talking about your activity. So this is actually taking focus off of uh, your perfect place. So maybe when you're talking about um, the chairlift and everything, maybe describe the chairlift and everything. Like, for example, over here, what you've done is the 20 minutes walk. So this is still dis descriptive, you know, it's 20 minutes away and everything. So when you are saying the chairlift was the part I enjoyed the most, it's becoming about you, not the perfect place anymore. So you need to make sure that your idea is still centered on the fact that you're talking about your perfect place, not about uh, what you do there, basically, you know. So even if you're talking about the chairlift, which is fine, okay, that's something you do. But maybe, you know, you don't have to mention how you enjoyed the most, how it's your favorite. That all is not required. Uh, getting a view of everything below me. Okay, let me just. Uh, everything below me from the top. Everything seems so small from up there. I remember counting the people. Now this is look. This is all about you. That you remember counting you. So this is not something about the place. So this is not describing the place. This is describing your feelings. Maybe you can describe your feelings about the place. Maybe once. Maybe twice. But not about every single thing not about the activities you're doing and how those activities are making you feel like that's about you then once they drop you up the hill it all seems scary but that was the best part uh the feeling of being scared this again this is a run-on sentence you need to stop here so this is so you need to put a full stop here the feeling of being scared disappeared as soon as i took the leap the ride is always was again you need to stay in the past tense was always magical but the sorry But the feeling was the better part. It again, this is all about you. So I need. I'm writing down a few things. Now what has happened here is that A, it's more focused towards your feelings, which is not required here. It needs to be focused towards the perfect place that you use to relax. Okay. Second, uh, the whole idea that the second paragraph is presenting is a chairlift. So it seems like it's about the chairlift, not the place itself. So you need to still be talking about the cabin, not the chairlift. This whole idea is about the chairlift, which is taking, let's, this is how many words was this? So this is taking... 185 out of the miniature words that you have maybe 450 words it's taking 200 out of that already you do not need this right and the third thing is that it needs to stay in the past tense. so maybe just the first part of it is still fine but then it's becoming about you and it's becoming about the chairlift which is both those things are not required are you getting what i'm saying here yeah yeah i understand yeah so i would like you to rewrite the second not right now do it at home just rewrite the second and do the third as well will that be okay uh should i also write the third paragraph or no or yeah, you need second? yeah so rewrite the second and write the third don't write the conclusion okay make sense? and yeah makes sense okay go ahead ask uh, I had one question. Um, uh, last class that we had, I remember uh, you saying that there was um, uh, some like practice topics that I need to finish. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I I'll send you that list. Yeah, yeah but I you didn't send it to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just send a set a reminder for that. So sorry about that. I'll send you. No, that no list. worries. Perfect. Thanks for reminding me that though. No worries. That's pretty much it for today. I'll see you on 
Thursday and I just we'll check this and then we're going to get started on another topic. Okay, okay. perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Alafis.